What's up, mortals? It's Shara Zoral here with a new video for you. Welcome to part 25 of What If Yusuku Was a Stand User. Just wanted to greet you guys by saying, sit back and relax. You're in for a treat. So, we begin. What do you mean we can't go out there? Kirishima questioned the pro hero who stood in front of the door with his arms crossed. You heard what Mandalay said. She gave us permission to use our quirks. She gave the students permission out in the woods permission to use their quirks, not you. And she said you could only use them for self-defense. So unless she says otherwise, you're staying here. Shortly after, footsteps were heard from outside the room. Vlad had a suspicious feeling as he saw blue fire radiate from the window and pushed Kirishima and Ashido to the ground as a cobalt inferno blew the door open. In the room, walked the fire-wielding villain, Dobby, who smirked at the students in front of him. Vlad blitzed Dobby, punching the villain in the gut and pinning him to the wall, using his quirk to trap the man before he could try anything. You dare walk into my class without so much as a plan? Not a smart move. Oh, I wouldn't bet on that. Dobby snickered as he looked at the class B teacher. You're acting just like I hoped you would. You can do whatever you want, but it's not going to change the fact that you've already lost. The society's already begun questioning the integrity of UA after the USJ attack. I wonder what kind of hit your school will take when word gets out that my people kidnapped a bunch of your students. Especially after one of you was snuffed out by the hero killer not so long ago. Vlad's eyebrow twitched at Dobby's words as Kirishima and the other students drew their quirks, ready to attack. Spare me the tough guy acts. We came here with just a few villains, and we've already separated your students. I doubt I can get out of this intact, so let me say that it's unfortunate that green-haired kid we're after isn't here with you all. If he was... At least you'd get the opportunity to say goodbye before we dispose of him, too. That's enough! Vlad punched the villain in the face with enough power to turn his head into brown muck on impact, shocking everyone in the room as Dobby's body turned to mud immediately after. Jeez, Vlad, I know that guy was a villain and all, but that was a bit overkill, don't you think? Kaminari commented. Don't be a fool, that wasn't his true body, Monoma corrected. Probably one of the villain's quirks that creates a doppelganger of sorts. If that's the case, they'll likely send another one of these guys after us. In that case, we'll need to ready ourselves when they come back, Sato suggested as he looked at the brown puddle in the room. The room was silent for a moment as Kaminari remembered something the villain had said, bringing up that he and his group were after a green-haired student. There's only four students with green hair in our grade. Midoriya, Asui, Tokage, and that Shiozaki girl. Kaminari listed. He said the student was a he, which means it's gotta be Midoriya. Midoriya? Oh god, why? Why would they go after him? What do they want with Midoriya? Kirishima couldn't take it anymore and marched towards the door as Vlad stepped in front of the teenager's path. An argument was about to brew between Kirishima and Vlad, but the pro hero heard more footsteps in the hall as if two people were coming his way. Vlad peeked his head out of the room and spotted Mineta and Shoji headed his way, entering the room as those in Class A were relieved to see more of their classmates. You guys okay? We heard an explosion. Shoji questioned as Vlad approached the boy. We're fine. A villain attacked us, but I took care of it. How's it looking out there? Shoji and Mineta were silent as what the boys saw before returning to camp weighed on them heavily. Shoji stepped forward to explain the situation as Mineta faced the floor in sorrow. The villains. One of them killed Tiger. Another badly injured Mandalay. Everyone froze up at Shoji's update. No one in the room wanted to believe what Shoji had just said. Tiger? They got Tiger? Mineta nodded at the question as everyone reacted in denial, shock, or sorrow, with Mina on the verge of tears. Aizawa showed up to help before they could kill Mandalay. He's fighting the villains now and told the three of us to run back to camp. Wait, the three of you? Who else is with you? What? Oh, Aoyama, he's- Mineta and Shoji turned their heads, only to find that Aoyama was nowhere to be found. W what the heck? Where's Aoyama? He was right behind us a moment ago! He probably ran to the 1A boys' room. 
I'll go find him. No! Vlad yelled, grinding Shoji's run to a stop. I'll find him. You two stay here till I get back. Shoji, make sure no one leaves this room. I'm trusting you to keep everyone here. Understand? As Vlad stepped into the hallway, the boy he was after, Aoyama, was running back into the forest. The student remembered what Spinner said about how he was a coward that didn't deserve the title of a hero. Those words gave extra weight to Aoyama's guilt-heavy shoulders over his earlier reluctance on not fighting back against the villains. This is all my fault. I could have tried something to save them had I not tensed up. If Aizawa didn't show up when he did, Handelay would have been killed. My classmates and so many others are at risk. I... I can't let this get any worse. But how? How can I stop this and help my friends? Enjoy this moment while you have it, dear Midoriya. Cause after my stand breaks you, I'm going to enjoy hearing you squeal for mercy as I crush your head under my size 16 boots. Let's go! Magne made the first move, rushing Isuku who was ready to fight. Vandalay, seeing the attacking villain, tried to get up and assist Midoriya, but could barely get to her feet as she flopped to the ground in pain. Midoriya! God damn it! Why didn't you run? I don't understand! Mandalay telepathically asked Izuku as she punched the ground in frustration. She didn't want to see what he was gonna do next and closed her eyes as she begged for the villain to stop as Magde stand through a haymaker at Midoriya. What? What the? What is that? Big Sis flew back, tumbled onto the ground, and causing Mandalay's eyes to widen at what she saw. I'm not letting you take Koch on, you villain! With his opponent down, he had a few seconds of breathing room. Mandalay, listen to me! I know you told me to run away, but I can't! This villain has a power that I have called a stand. It's a power different from quirks that makes a person almost unbeatable in a fight against anyone that doesn't have one themselves. I think there are other villains out there with stands as well. I have to stop these guys, otherwise the entire camp will be in danger. I need to fight. Oh, wait, a stand? Mandalay repeated. What's a- Wait! Midoriya, I can't let Mandalay! You I need you to trust me! Izuku shot back, silencing the pro hero. I know this sounds crazy, and I know you and Eraser are going to give me an earful later for what I'm about to do, but I am the only one they could beat this guy! Magne reacted in irritation at that last thing Izuku said as the villain slowly got to her feet, wiping the blood from her nose. <laughs> okay, now I get it. Your stand. It evolved since I saw you at the sports festival. Magne deduced. Alright, kid. Those first few hits you threw were on the house. The next ones, though are gonna cost you your life! Dirty Diana! The enemy stand flew forward with its fists tight, throwing a heavy one-two combo as Act 3 blocked the incoming punches. Personal Jesus attempted a counterpunch, but the orange stand evaded the blow. The fight between Personal Jesus and Dirty Diana became a fast-paced boxing match with near 70 mile an hour punches from both sides being thrown, countered, and blocked in quick succession, with both stand users unable to land an effective blow. In the farthest corner of Izuku's eye, Mandalay spectated the whole thing, in her eyes, Midoriya and Magde were just standing still, angrily facing each other as gusts of wind and the faint sound of impacts erupted between the two. She had no idea what was going on, but could tell Midoriya was somehow fighting and knew she had to help. She used her quirk on Pixie Bob, begging her fellow pussycat to get up as she desperately needed her quirk to turn the tide, but Pixie was unresponsive. Damn it! Mandalay fumed as she directed her attention towards the only other pro hero near her. It's all over the love of God, please don't be out cold too. The eraser hero was on his back but lifted his head, trying to get up as he loudly moaned from the pain of his oh. earlier fight. 
The first thing Aizawa saw was Izuku and Magne staring each other down. What the- Midoriya! Aizawa used his quirk on Magne to nullify whatever he was fighting Midoriya with, but Erasure tensely gasped when he realized his quirk did nothing. What? Erasure's not working? How? Is he not attacking Midoriya with a quirk? What the hell's with this guy? Give it up, shrimp! It's clear my stand is stronger than yours. You're just delaying the inevitable! Dirty Diana threw another hearty punch at Midoriya's stand, only for Act 3 to grab the stand's wrist, extend it, and throw a hard punch into Dirty Diana's elbow. Act 3 took the opening to throw another flurry of punches at Dirty Diana, causing Magne to stagger back as another hard punch knocked Magne to the ground. I don't care how much stronger your stand is. I have a heck of a lot more experience using my stand than you do with yours. I'm not backing down, and I'm not gonna let you hurt anyone else! Midoriya rushed his murderous opponent, hoping to knock the villain out and end the fight. But Magne had an ace up her sleeve. Dirty Diana removed its eye patch and looked at Izuku with its hidden eye. Just then, Izuku saw a brief, bright flash of white completely engulf his vision. Just then, everything around him looked different. The world around him looked dead. There was no grass on the ground and none of the trees had leaves. He even looked around and noticed that Big Sis Mag, Mandalay, Aizawa, and Pixie Bob were completely invisible, except for their clothes. All except for Tiger, whose clothes and even lifeless body were visible. Izuku even looked at his arms and hands, seeing that they were invisible too. It was as if he and everyone around him had Hagakure's quirk. He even couldn't see his stand despite feeling its presence right in front of him. What the heck? What happened? Midoriya oh. was interrupted by a hard impact to the face, one that cracked his cheekbone and nearly knocking some of his teeth out as he fell to the ground in pain. Just then, he felt a series of hard punches to his ribs, face, and jaw, as if someone was battering Midoriya's stand. Personal Jesus tried to fight back against whatever was in front of him, but the stand missed each of his punches. Something grabbed Act Three's arm, socked the stand in the mouth, and broke Personal Jesus' left arm causing Izuku to scream in sharp pain as the humorous bone in his left arm broke. The attack was followed by what felt like a knee to the nose that caused Izuku's nose to break and two of his front teeth to get knocked out. Now who's the one that's screwed? Huh? Izuku tried recalling his stand, but something grabbed Act Three's neck and choke slammed it into the ground, <laughs> causing Izuku to cough up blood as Act Three's face was repeatedly pummeled. Still think all that experience with your stand is gonna save you, kid? You don't seem to be doing so hot right now. What the hell is this? What kind of stand power is this? Izuku felt something grab his neck and lift him into the air as whatever grip on its neck slowly tightened. It's an ability my dirty Diana can do. I can only use it against people I really want dead. When my stand looks at someone with the eye behind its eye patch, anything with the life force becomes invisible to the person my stand looks at. Literally anything with life energy. The grass, animals, trees, people, even other stands. Magne was ready to execute the child as the stand tightened its left hand into a fist to donut Izuku's chest. Oh, by the way, I'm a woman. Asshole. Stop! Eraser had attempted to constrict Big Sis Mag and pull her away from Midoriya, but the villain was onto Aizawa's attack and grabbed his scarf before it could wrap around her stomach. The villain smirked as the struggle between Aizawa and Magne became a tug of war. But then, Magne's feet started to move on their own. He ran away from Izuku's body, getting Midoriya out of his stand's effective range. He had no idea what was happening, as he was uncontrollably tying his own arms up into Aizawa's scarf to restrain himself. Even though he couldn't see Magne, Izuku was ecstatic enough to crack a smile, knowing he had Magne where he wanted her. Heh. <laughs> Aizawa. You got her. We got her. Earlier, when Midoriya spoke to Mandalay, he silently ordered his stand to plant a psionic landmine onto Aizawa's scarf as a secret trump card in case the fight Izuku would get into with Magne didn't go in his favor. Midoriya knew Aizawa would never idly stand by as one of his students got thrashed, and thanks to the assist by Aizawa, Big Sis was under Midoriya's command. What the hell is this? 
I'm not doing this, unless... Hey, you! Boy! Is this some kind of trick you hid from me? Magda angrily questioned Midoriya. You still think you can beat me? Foolish brat! When I find a way to get out of this, I'll slaughter you like the rest! My dirty Diana's unbeatable! All you're doing is adding a few extra moments to your pathetic life! The ground beneath Magne's boots began to shake as the villain quickly sank into the dirt. Magne panicked, wondering what was happening, deducing this had to be a quirk at work. And she was right. Magne turned her head toward a bloodied pixie bob who awoke moments ago. She was on all fours and looked uncharacteristically furious, like she wanted blood. You? I thought you'd be out for at least another hour! Damn it! No! Magne tried using her quirk on the blonde pussycat, only to find her magnetism was nullified. Think again, pal! Aizawa growled with his eyes glowing red. Without her quirk to help, Magne's second option was to use her stand to dig out her body, but the amount of dirt burying her was too much. Within seconds, Magne was completely submerged into the earth with no air to breathe. After several moments, the villain's head came back up, asphyxiated and passed out as the villain was buried neck deep into the ground. Just then, Izuku noticed the world around him reverted back to normal. That was for Tiger, you son of a bitch! Eraser asked Pixie Bob if she was okay. She didn't respond as her anger quickly changed to sheer sorrow as tears built in her eyes at the sight of her deceased teammate several meters away. Aizawa took her non-response as a yes as he retracted his scarf from the ground and marched over to Midoriya, whose upper body looked broken and bloody. Midoriya looked at his teacher with a single eye, noticing his teacher had an expression that was a mix of distraught and absolute rage. When this is over, and we're back at school, you're getting detention for the rest of the school year! The absolute rage in Aizawa's voice made Izuku's heart feel as if it froze over in fear. Was Mandalay not crystal clear enough with the instruction she gave you earlier? You had permission to use your powers for self-defense, not to fight! Your priority was to head back to the camp and regroup! What were you thinking, Midoriya? Look at yourself! Why? Why are you talking to me like this, sir? Aizawa's fists tightened at Midoriya's question. This was the most assertive Izuku's ever acted towards his homeroom teacher. I saved you! I saved Mandalay, Pixie, Bakugo! I saved all of you with what I did! I know I acted against your wishes, but I had to! You couldn't beat that villain, sir! No one here had the power to win that fight except for me! I had to fight, sir! Was my effort in saving you all not enough?! Victoria. Aizawa's fists tightened as his rage only grew at Izuku's response. He wanted to lash out at the boy and tell him why his actions were wrong, but this wasn't the time as there were still villains out there and students in danger. For now, he put his anger to the side and asked the Greenette if he could get up. Despite his badly damaged upper body, he was able to slowly get to his feet while aching and moaning from the pain. Get back to the camp and stay there. Mandalay, you go with him and send out a distress signal for help. If you're not at the camp when I get back, you're done at UA. Do you understand me? Sir, please, you don't understand. The villain say, Aizawa, another villain! Aizawa turned and spotted a second villain with a yellow coat blitzed towards Magnus' head to touch her. Aizawa quickly erased the man's quirk as the villain touched Big Sis's head, causing the assailant to gasp as nothing happened. The ground beneath the man's feet begun to move from Pixie's quirk, but the villain popped into the trees behind him, avoiding Pixie's trap. Trats! I was a second too slow, the man said as he fixed his top hat. Aizawa, Pixie, and Mandalay faced the new threat. Izuku, however, was quick to notice something was off. Kachan? Hey! Where's Kachan? And that lizard-looking villain, they were right over there! Mr. Compressed smiled behind his mask, like the dastardly showman he was. Ladies and gents, this is the moment you waited for. Whoa, whoa, whoa. If you're referring to the boy with the messy blonde hair, I have him along with my partner Spinner in my possession, along with many others I've crossed this evening. 
The villain showed those in his attendance a series of marbles between his fingers, with one of the glass balls containing Bakugo. <gasps> that guy's got caught, Sean! Dang it! He's probably got a quirk that lets him compress things! Izuku tried running for the villain, but Aizawa restrained him with his scarf. Pixie used her quirk to sink the tree Compress stood on into the ground like quicksand. But the villain tipped his hat to the heroes and hopped off into the forest, causing Pixie to grind her teeth in anger. You're not getting away that easily, Bob! The blonde pussycat got on all fours and made as many dirt monsters as she could, creating a small army of dirt beasts in a matter of seconds as her creations charged into the forest after Compress. Aizawa, meanwhile, tried to get Midoriya to calm down as he tried freeing himself from Aizawa's restraints, to no avail. Aizawa demanded Izuku to head straight back to camp, but Midoriya fell to his knees and punched the ground with his one good arm as tears built in his eyes, knowing he failed to save Bakugo as he screamed out Kachan's name. All he could hope for now was that Pixie's quirk would be enough to turn the tide of this already sour situation. Before Midoriya's fight with Magne, Class B's Tetsu Tetsu and Kendo were running into the heart of the pink gas storm that took out most of their classmates. Kendo theorized the gas had to be swirling around a central location like a hurricane, deducing that if they ran towards the center of the storm, they'd find the villain responsible for the gas and deal with them. Also, Tetsu Tetsu was eager for a fight and wasn't gonna waste an opportunity to throw down with the villain. However, the B-Class duo had no idea the villain they were after was ready for them before they arrived. Three, no, two people are coming my way. Must have figured out how my gas works. Should have expected that from UA students. Well, no matter. At least now I get a chance to take my stand out for a proper test drive. Hm, funny. When I got my stand ability, I didn't really like it. Otoishi told me stands are a manifestation of one's spiritual energy and shape themselves based on a person's psyche. I was hoping my stand would be a strong humanoid type like Magnes or some hard-to-stop force like Toga's. But, well, it's like the old saying, all men are not created equal. I found you! A steampunk-style, sawed-off, shotgun-looking stand appeared in Buster's hand as he aimed at Tetsu Tetsu and fired at the boy's hand, blasting the teenager in the face and destroying his gas mask. Tetsu Tetsu! Mustard felt a slight adrenaline kick in reaction to the kickback from his stand. Damn! <sighs> Alright, scratch what I said earlier. I guess my stand's salt and pepper isn't so bad after all. Tetsu Tetsu! Oh god, are you alright? You're bleeding! The steel-skinned teen covered his mouth as best as he could, telling his class president he was fine as he thought about the attack he took. Jesus, what was that? It felt like I took a shotgun blast to the face! Mustard approached the UA students, keeping his salt and pepper aimed at the maskless boy on his knees. Oh hey, I remember you. I saw you during the sports festival cavalry battle. You can make your skin hard like steel. <laughs> well, that won't be a problem. Now it's a matter of how long you can hold your breath. What's with this guy? Tetsu Tetsu continuously thought. Does he have two quirks? What did he even hit me with? It's like he's holding a gun, but there's nothing in his hand. I remember you as well. You're the girl that lost the first fight to the festival to that guy with the purple hair. Kendo felt a jolt of displeasure roll down her spine at the remembrance of that sensitive memory. I didn't get a chance to see your quirk in action, but I'm willing to bet you're not as bulletproof as he is. Mustard aimed his fists at Kendo as Tetsu Tetsu dived in front of his friend. Mustard fired, hitting the boy's stomach and causing the force from the shock to punch Tetsu Tetsu into Kendo as the two tumbled to the ground. Come on, I'm fighting two UA students at once. I expect a challenge from the likes of you two. Mustard, knowing he fired his second blast, retreated into the gas to reload. The shotgun stand shifted its shape as the chamber turned into a sort of grinder and the barrels of the gun got bigger. Mustard aimed the firearm towards the ground as it began sucking up pebbles, twigs, and whatever else was around like a handheld vacuum cleaner. Hey, that would be useful in my house. Screw Roombas. Get salt and pepper. 
Stan grinded up its hull into ammo and reshifted into its shotgun form as the stand was locked and loaded. My salted pepper could only fire two shots before it has to reload. I gotta strategize my approach. Pick my targets carefully and fall back to reload when I get an opening. Mustard could sense where his targets were located. One person was just in front of him, slowly making his way towards him while the other student was moving towards his right. Mustard aimed at the person just in front of him and fired, hitting Tetsu Tetsu in the chest and nearly knocking the wind from his legs as he fell to his back. Hey, stupid! Sneak attacks aren't gonna work on me. I can sense where you are, Mustard boasted. My quirk lets me dispense a poisonous gas that could put people to sleep, but that's not all. I can sense any fluctuations within my gas. In other words, I can tell the location of anything that's within my gas. Just like your redhead friend standing 12 feet in the open to my right. Kendo, look out! Itsuka enlarged her hands to shield herself as she ran for cover, but Mustard's stand was too fast for her as he fired. The shot blasted several deep holes into her left hand, shattering the bones in her palm as Kendo screamed in agony. Tetsu Tetsu's blood boiled hearing his class president in pain and rushed Mustard, only for the villain to hide back in the gas to reload. Tetsu Tetsu tried chasing him, but lost him due to the low visibility. Tetsu Tetsu kept his breath held as best as he could. He looked for his opponent, hoping to knock him out before he could further hurt Kendo. Seconds later, he heard a branch break in front of him and rushed in, only to receive another shot from Salt and Peppa to the gut, blasting him back several meters. The boy held his ribs as his skin began to crack and bleed. What are you, the Terminator? Come on, pal. I can see the blood dripping down your face and shirt. You're getting weak. I figured a student from a school like UA would be a bit more tactical in a situation like this. You two are really shattering the image I had of your school. What a shame. Mustard walked towards Tetsu Tetsu and pointed his stand at the boy to finish him off as said student began to think that this attack was a bad idea. Before he could pull the trigger, Bixis Magne's voice came to him through his earpiece. Hey darlings, I got that boy with the explosion quirk Shigaraki wanted. Had to knock him out and kill one of the pussycats to do so, but I got him. Let's head back to the rendezvous. Not sure if any of you took care of that Midoriya child, but Shigaraki made it clear that he won't be happy if he's still alive after this. So, to Otoishi and the others, better hop to it. Hmm. So one of the pussycats is dead, huh? Mustard said to himself. Hmm. Just another group of false idols, treated as gods in this wretched world. Well, whoever bit the dust, they won't be going to the great beyond alone. Might as well give them a little company. STOP! Kendo rushed in to save Tetsu Tetsu, but Mustard stepped back and directed his attention at the girl. As Mustard moved his arm to aim his stand at Kendo, Tetsu Tetsu recklessly rushed the gas villain to get a hidden, but Mustard quickly aimed back at Tetsu Tetsu and shot him point blank at the head. The shot caused more blood and sparks to fly from the boy's forehead as his skin returned to its normal color as he hit the ground. The boy's face was covered in blood and motionless. Tetsu Tetsu! You... You bastard! Mustard retreated into the gas to reload, but Kendo wasn't gonna let him go easy. She enlarged her hands and wildly threw them around in front of her, causing surprisingly fast gusts of wind that fanned out most of the gas and revealed Mustard's position. Once she spotted her target, Kendo grabbed a rock and threw it as hard as she could at the villain. <laughs> making contact with Mustard's face and rupturing his mask, knocking him to the ground. God! My mask! You bitch! Kendo angrily rushed Mustard to attack, but the villain raised his fist towards Kendo. The girl knew he was gonna attack and shielded herself with her enlarged hands as she ran for cover, but Mustard fired before she could hide. The shot blasted her pinky finger off her right hand as she tumbled behind a tree, screaming from the pain as Mustard quickly panicked. Damn it! The gas is leaking into my mask. If I breathe this stuff in, I'm done for. Mustard thought fearfully as he held his breath. I have no choice. I gotta cancel my quirk and fall back to the rendezvous. The gas typhoon quickly dissipated as Itsuka peeled her hand out from her cover, spotting Mustard run off into the forest. Yeah! That's right! Run away, you coward! As soon as Mustard was out of sight, 
Kendo's anger turned to extreme worry as she turned towards her bleeding, motionless classmate. She ran to Tetsu Tetsu and checked to see if he was okay, begging the boy to open his eyes and get up. But he didn't. She put her fingers to his neck to check for a pulse, confirming he was still alive but completely out. Kendo remained calm and picked up her friend as best as she could with her damaged hands and ran straight to camp as her anxiety increased at the thought of losing one of her classmates in her arms. Meanwhile, Mustard, who was making his way to the villain's rendezvous, began mumbling to himself, That girl can enjoy this victory now, but I'm the one that'll have the last laugh. The real power of my salt and pepper's abilities are well underway. I give those two four days at best, even less for that metalhead. Minutes after this conflict, Dobby and Twice were making their way to the villain's meetup point. Dobby just received the drill Nomu under his command as Mr. Compress's voice came through the villain's earpieces immediately after. Everyone, it's Compress. I have Bakugo, and I'm afraid we've lost Magne. What? What do you mean we lost Magne? She was so weak! Dobby told Twice to shut it and asked Compress what happened. Magne and that Midoriya boy were clashing with one another. But Eraserhead and Pixie intervened and defeated her before she could close the curtains on our target. Fret not, though, for all is not lost. I have the three students Shigaraki wants alive, along with Spinner and about seven other UA students compressed in my grasp. I also have Ragdoll. I'm about a minute away. See you all soon. So, they took down Magne, huh? And that Stan using Kit still alive? Dobby questioned himself as he arrived to the rendezvous. He looked around and saw that he and Twice were the first to arrive. Hmm. Doesn't matter to me, but Shigaraki's not gonna like this. Nah, don't sweat it. We might not have gotten the stand user, but we got that ragdoll chick plus a buttload of school kids. That's a win in my book. This plan sucked. I want a do-over. Dobby rolled his eyes at Twice's response as a moment later, the villains heard rustling of the bushes nearby, spotting Toga coming their way. Oh, I was hoping to be the first one here. Well, shucks. Toga pouted. Hey, crazy. How many different blood samples did you get? Did you get the three we needed? Toga nodded at Dobby's question with her seemingly innocent smile. Three full tanks. I got a lot more than I thought thanks to my chemical romance. It made getting all this blood so easy. I even spotted these three cute girls I was interested in. Suyu, Ochako, and... Well, I didn't get the third one's name, but she had black hair and blue eyes. She was so pretty. I can't wait to drink her blood and be as beautiful as her. <laughs> way to go, Toga. You ruined it. Twice cheered. Now we just need Compress to bring home the bacon and we got ourselves a grand slam. Hey, shut it, you two. You're being too loud. Mr. Compress's voice came back into the earpieces as he warned the villains that he had a problem. I'm afraid we have a few uninvited guests arriving in the final act. Pixie Bob has sent her beasts after me. Compress looked behind him as four flying dirt monsters were chasing down Compress, with about two more monsters taking chase on the ground. Kurogiri, this is going to be a photo finish. Wherever you are, be ready to get me out of here in a pinch. Wait, what about the others? Mustard? Moonfish? Otoishi? What about Magne? Are we seriously leaving them? Toga interrupted. Eraserhead has Magne. If Kurogiri goes for her, we run the risk of his quirk getting erased. Dobby answered. If that happens, we lose our only way out of here and we're screwed. As for the others, if they're not here when Capress shows up, they're getting left behind. Kurogiri appeared from behind the three villains as he opened up a warp gate. It's been four minutes since the signal. Time to leave. Toga skipped into the portal with twice right behind her. Dobby remained where he was to make sure Compress got back safe. But before he could arrive, he heard monstrous footsteps coming his way from two directions. Five of Pixie Bob's dirt monsters appeared from the trees, all of them setting their sights on the villain. It's Pixie Bob's quirk. Dobby, we must leave. I'm not leaving without Compress. Back me up, Kurogiri. One of the dirt beasts charged Dobby as he threw a wave of fire at the monster, engulfing it in blue flames. But the villain tensed up as the flames barely did any damage as the beast jumped into the air to pounce Dobby. 
Kurogiri used his quirk to portal the beast away from the villain, giving Dobby some breathing room as he continued attacking the beasts around him. After several seconds of throwing fire, it seemed more and more monsters were coming his way as Kurogiri did his best to defend Dobby. But one of Pixie's monsters got through Kurogiri's defense, slashing Dobby's back and pinning the villain to the ground. The beast roared at the pyromaniac as it pressed its weight onto the villain's back. However, half the monster's head was blasted into chunks as its body fell to the ground. Mustard arrived onto the scene, saving Dobby as the drill Nomu under Dobby's command also arrived. Rushing into the fight as Mustard and the Nomu helped take some of the load off of Dobby. Compress! Where the hell are you? The magic villain responded that he could see the villains from where he was, telling Kurogiri to hold out a little longer. Compress hopped from the tree, gliding in the air toward Kurogiri's warp gate as Dobby, Mustard, and the Drill Nomu stood their ground. You better have our targets, Compress! Dobby yelled as he threw out more fire at Pixie's monsters. Of course! All four of the students on Shigaraki's lists are accounted for. My performances never leave the crowd disappointed. Whatever, let's go! Dobby ordered Mustard and the Drill Nomu to fall back into the warp gate as Compress and Dobby followed suit not a moment later. But like the villainous showman he was, Compress turned around, took off his hat, and bowed to the dirt monsters like the entertainment persona he was. But from out of nowhere, a bright sparkly laser beam shot by a distressed Yuga Aoyama blasted Compress's wrist, damaging his hand and knocking three marbles out of the villain's sleeve. Dobby tensed up, reaching out to the marble closest to him, grabbing it as the other two were out of his range. The marbles dropped to the ground as those inside popped out, revealing Ragdoll and Ojiro. Compress tried to grab the green-haired woman with his good hand, but another dirt monster intercepted the villain's path, unintentionally compressing the beast into a marble. Just then, one of the flying dirt dragons dive-bombed Compress and Dobby through Kurogiri's warp gate before the villains would react taking the fight to a non-disclosed warehouse where the villains were taken to. Dobby and Mr. Compress were slammed into a concrete wall as the dragon roared at the villains. The Drill Nomu blitzed towards the beast, tackling it to the ground and skewering the dragon's skull with one of its drills, defeating the last of Pixie's dirt beasts. Kurogiri closed the portal before more monsters could enter the warehouse as the villain's assault was finally over. Everyone except Moonfish, Big Sis Magde, and Otoishi were accounted for. Compress, despite beating himself up over the loss of Ragdoll, had every person on Shigaraki's captured list. At least he hoped he did. While everyone took a breather and assessed themselves, Dobby took a closer look at the marble he snatched to see who he took. That's when Dobby cracked the widest smile he grinned in years. Shoto Todoroki. Thank you all for sticking around and I really hope that you enjoyed. Before you leave, we would just like to let you know that We the Celestials has many other channels for your entertainment and viewing pleasure. All the information you'll need is right below here in the description, so feel free to check out all the other incredible projects our team creates. Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below. That's all for today's video, so goodbye and have a divine day. Peace!